In this video, I will be explaining how to prepare final accounts. Final accounts is a very big chapter. So if I'm going to explain the total final accounts in a single video, the length of the video will be too long. So I have divided this final accounts videos into uh, three parts. In this video, this is the first video. In this video, I will be explaining you what is final accounts, what are the accounts that are prepared under final accounts, what is capital item, what is revenue item, uh, what is direct expense, indirect expense, format for preparing uh, trading account, profit and loss account and balance sheet. In the next video, I will be explaining about uh, adjustments, only adjustments in preparing final accounts. And in the last video, I have explained a few uh, problems and worked out answers for it. So all the videos link, I've given it in the description box. Uh, do watch all the videos for a better understanding of this final accounts chapter. Okay, let's move on to this video. What is final accounts? Uh, final accounts is usually prepared at the end of an accounting period to give a meaningful information of the so far recorded accounting transactions. Meaningful information means so far the accountant will be recording all the transaction that has been taken place in the journal, then classify it in the ledger, then some subsidiary books and finally we summarize it in the trial balance. So if we have our accounts just like that in the trial balance, it does not convey any meaning. It does not give any information. So uh, to measure the performance of the business and to know the financial position of the business, this final accounts is being prepared. And the three statements that we prepare under final accounts are trading and profit and loss account and balance sheet. This uh, trading and profit and loss account uh, measures the financial performance of a company. So how to measure performance of a company? We will measure the performance based on the profit or loss that is suffered by the organization. If the business is earning profit or the business is going under loss, based on that we understand the performance level of the company. Then this balance sheet depicts the financial position of a business. How do we know the financial position of the business? By knowing how much the company owns. How much the company owes to outsiders. How much the company owns, the how much the company owes and what is the amount of capital that is owner's contribution in the company. All these things talks about the financial position of the company. So the balance sheet gives the financial position the trading and profit and loss account gives the performance of a business organization. Okay, now before moving on to the uh, format of preparing this trading and profit and loss account and balance sheet, you should have an understanding about expenses and receipts. <clears throat> you all know the meaning of expenses and you all know the meaning of receipts. But you should again have an understanding about what are capital expenses and what are revenue expenses. Capital expenses means an expense which is incurred today and the benefit which we receive will extend beyond one accounting period. That is today I'm incurring an expense and the benefit of this expense the business is receiving even after one accounting period then that expense is a capital expense. I will explain this with an example. Uh, you take land and buildings for example. Land and buildings the business is purchasing today. We are purchasing the land and building today. How long this land and building will be with us? Say we are till that period. Say if the land and building is with us for 10 years, we are receiving its benefit for 10 years. Isn't it? We are buying a machinery. The useful life of the machinery is 15 years. So how long we will receive the benefit of this expenditure of buying this machinery? We will receive it for 15 years. So we are ex incurring the expenditure on a particular day and the benefit of the expenses is being received even after one accounting period. So this expense is called as capital expense. Then revenue expense means it is day to day expenses. These expenses, uh, the benefit of these expenses does not exceed beyond one accounting period. We receive the benefit of this expenses immediately 
or within one accounting period that is called as revenue expenditure it is also called as recurring expenditure okay uh, the types revenue expenses can be further classified into direct expenses and indirect expenses so what is direct expenses direct expense is an expense which is incurred for manufacturing a product or it is incurred for manufacturing a product or uh, you can say that it is incurred for making the product saleable for or trading expenses we can even call it as a trading expenses examples of direct expenses are wages power and coal fuel i have given an exhaustive list of direct expenses in my next slide okay as of now you just understand what is direct expenses and indirect expenses are nothing but administrative expenses these are administrative expenses okay so this is the category of expense capital expense and revenue expense <clears throat> okay now receipt again receipt can be of capital receipt and revenue receipt what is a capital receipt capital receipt will indicate an obligation to the business to pay it is an obligation obligation to to repay we have to repay this that is a capital receipt uh, an example is bank loan bank loan say we are the business is going for a bank loan once the loan is sanctioned what happens money comes into the business we are receiving money but this receipt has an obligation that it has to be repaid to the banker again so this is a capital receipt another example is capital capital additional capital introduced by the owner of the business so when the owner of the business introduce capital what happens money comes into the business the business is receiving money so it is a receipt but it is an obligation to pay isn't it we have to repay the business we treat business and the owner as separate persons okay this is equity this capital is equity and it belongs to the owner of the company this bank loan is a liability it has to be repaid to the creditor or to the banker at a point of time so capital receipt is an obligation to repay revenue receipt is which does not have an obligation to repay for example interest on investment then dividend all these examples of capital receipt even sale some sale of asset profit on sale of asset not sale it is profit if we are selling an asset and if we receive any profit that is a revenue receipt which these ex, these receipts does not have an obligation to repay here we are receiving money but we don't have to repay this to anybody else on a later date so this is what is capital receipt and revenue receipt okay having an understanding of all these things we should know where we will record all these things we will record the capital items in the balance sheet both capital receipt and capital expenses will be recorded in the balance sheet this revenue expenses and revenue receipt these will be recorded in the trading and profit and loss account okay capital items will be recorded in the balance sheet revenue items will be recorded in the trading and profit and loss account okay now having understood this we will move on to uh, to understand the format of a trading account this trading account will uh, will take the shape of a ledger account see i have already explained you how to prepare a ledger account in another video so this will take the shape of a ledger account the left hand side will be called as the debit side and the right hand side will be called as the credit side we will have a particulars column and two amount columns an inner column and outer column inner column is for calculation outer column is for the net amount again in the credit side particulars amount inner column and outer column okay the first item that will appear on a trading account is we will first record the opening stock to opening stock okay since we are recording it in the debit side we should always use the prefix to so to opening stock opening stock is nothing but the closing stock of the previous year previous year's closing stock will be the opening stock for the current year we will write the amount in the inner column okay after recording this 
in the trading account the first expense and the trading account in the debit side we will record expenses in the credit side we will record receipts okay okay now expense the first expense that you will record is purchases two purchases this is the first amount that that first expense that we will record in the trading account and this purchases will usually have one adjustment if there is any returns if there is no returns we can write the purchases amount in the outer column if there is returns purchase returns we will write the amount in the inner column and from this we will deduct returns if there is any purchase returns we will write the amount in the inner column deduct it from the purchases amount and find, write the net amount in the outer column okay after recording purchases the next expense that we will record is two direct expenses in the previous uh, slide i explained you revenue expenses can be divided into two categories direct expense and indirect expense direct expenses will be recorded in the trading account we will record all the direct expenses so what are direct expenses see i have given you a list of direct expenses wages wages and salaries fuel power coal oil carriage inwards manufacturing expense import duty custom duty dock dues factory rent right on purchase factory lightning and factory rent these are examples of direct expenses okay if there is any direct expense given in the question you write it in the debit side and write the amount in the amount column that's all in the debit side in the credit side the first item that we will record is sales by sales since uh, we are recording it in the credit side i'm using the prefix by and if there is no sales returns you can write the amount directly in the outer column if we have sales returns write the amount in the inner column deduct sales returns write the amount in the inner column deduct it from sales write the net amount in the outer column okay the first receipt that we will record in the credit side is sales if there is any returns deduct the returns and bring the answer to the outer column and the next is we will record closing stock by closing stock write the amount in the outer column that's all this is how we will prepare trading account we will record opening stock purchases and direct expenses in the debit side sales and closing stock in the credit side after this we will tally this account <coughs> tallying of ledger account i hope you all know how to tally ledger account so i am not explaining that we are finding the total if your debit total is less that is if your credit total this side total is high we will write the balancing figure on the debit side and we will call it as gross profit to gross profit carry down within bracket b dot f okay if your credit total is more than your debit total then it is called as gross profit on the other hand if your debit total is more than your credit total then it is called as gross loss by gross loss carry down within bracket b dot f understood you will have only one balancing figure either this side or this side if your credit total is more it is gross profit if your debit total is more it is called as gross loss so this is how we will prepare the trading account now moving on to profit and loss account see profit and loss account is a continuation of the trading account usually we will prepare trading and profit and loss account together so this is what i have been explaining opening stock purchases direct expenses sales and closing stock i have assumed that we are having gross profit and i am bringing down the gross profit to the pnl account pnl account is profit and loss account we bring down the gross profit as i already told you in the debit side we will record expenses and in the credit side we will record receipts isn't it so In the debit side, we are recording indirect expenses. See, direct expenses we will record it in the trading account. Indirect expenses we will record it in the P and L account. Okay, then revenue receipts. 
revenue receipts we will record it in the credit side of the trading account sorry credit side of the pnl account then tally your account find out the balancing figure if your balancing figure is on the debit side it is net profit if your balancing figure is on the credit side it is net loss you understood very simple format trading and profit and loss account is very simple we will record only direct uh, revenue expenses on the revenue expenses direct expenses will go to the trading account indirect expenses will go to the pnl account okay now you can ask me uh, what are all indirect expenses so i have given you a list of indirect expenses i am classifying indirect expenses into operating and non operating expenses and this is the com not a complete list i have tried to include as many expenses as possible you can go through this these are all expenses list of indirect expenses i have tried to include almost all the expenses now revenue receipts i told you in the credit side we will record revenue receipts of the pnl pnl account okay what are those revenue receipts again i have classified that into operating income and non operating income and this is the list of revenue receipt which we will record in the credit side of the pnl account okay okay now moving on to the format of balance sheet so first we'll start with the title balance sheet of we will write the name as it is given in the question as on the date that is given in the question and the balance sheet will also have two sides but we will not call it debit side and the credit side instead we will call it as liabilities and assets okay balance sheet has also got two sides we will not call it as debit and credit side instead it will be called as the liability side and asset side and we will have two amount columns inner column and outer column inner column is for calculation outer column is for the net amount okay okay in the liability side the first item that we will usually record is capital okay write the amount in the inner column because capital we will have adjustment okay the first adjustment with capital is net profit or net loss we we will prepare trading and profit and loss account and then only we will come to balance sheet so in the balance sheet to the capital we have to add net profit if you have net profit you will add it if you have net loss you will deduct it either one only we will be having either we will have net profit or we will have net loss prof if you have profit add it to capital if you have loss deduct it from capital okay then the next adjustment with capital is interest on capital if you have interest on capital add it with capital if you have drawings deduct it from capital if you have interest on drawings deduct it from capital okay whatever you have do that adjustment bring the answer to the outer column this is the capital amount as on the date of balance sheet as on this date whatever date we are preparing balance sheet okay so after recording capital we will record long term liabilities what are liabilities liabilities are the other amount which the company owes to outsiders owes that is the company has to pay to outsiders that is called as liabilities i already told you capital receipts all capital receipts will be recorded here okay so bank loan is a long term liability mortgage loan then current liabilities we will have sundry creditors bills payable bank overdraft okay apart from these outstanding expenses income received in advance what is outstanding expense what is income received in advance i am explaining in my next video in my final accounts adjustment video okay you watch that video of knowing what is outstanding expense and what is income received in advance all these things we will record in the liability side of the balance sheet now moving on to fixed assets in the asset side in the asset side we will record all those items which the business owns which is owned by the company in the liability side we will record what the company owes in the asset side we will record what the company owns okay there is a difference between the two okay we will record all assets fixed assets uh, i hope you all know what is all fixed assets uh, fixed assets can be again be classified into 
tangible and intangible these are examples of tangible assets and these are examples of intangible assets okay tangible assets means that we can feel touch all those things land and building plant and machinery furniture goodwill patent trademark copyright are intangible assets then long term loans investments all these are examples of fixed assets then we will record current assets sundry debtors bills receivable closing stock then liquid assets cash in hand cash at bank then prepaid expenses and accrued income i am explaining what is prepaid expenses and accrued income in my next video okay final accounts adjustment video watch that video for an understanding of this okay this is the format of the balance sheet we will record all these items in the liability side and in the asset side and finally we will arrive at the total this total of the asset and liability side should tally okay there should not be any balancing figure the total of the asset side and the liability side should get tallied then only your answer is right okay so i hope you understood uh, what are direct expenses what are indirect expenses what is capital item what is revenue item and the format for preparing a trading and profit and loss account and balance sheet hope you found this video useful thank you for watching